All right, so this morning I woke up, I read this article, it was really interesting, it was written in 2015, uh, and basically uh, they tried to optimize Perlin noise, and they actually ended up going from a very naive implementation, uh, taking a lot of time to run a function, to a really efficient and fast method where they managed to get a 336 times performance improvement. Thinking of that, I decided, let's try and see what we can do about this on the PSP. So I went ahead and created a benchmarking suite to see uh, what exactly we could get done. For this sort of mini-series, I'm going to be calling it the advent of PSP uh, in reference to the advent of code. And I think it would be really cool to see what I can get to do at the end of this. So basically, I've got this code. Um, it's pretty simple. Um, you can really gloss over like this entire area of the function or of the program because it's just the basic PSP stuff. Uh, that you need. Uh, here's like a very simple benchmarking utility. It gets the uh, system time from the thread uh, and this is in microseconds. Uh, basically you can get the start time and the end time and then the result is end minus start in order to get the total milliseconds it took. And basically I have a method here that just prints it out to both the screen and to the console so you can see in PSP uh, SH. Then past this, I basically created a wrapper for every single algorithm I wanted to test. Uh, two of these are really basic algorithms and another one is called fast noise and it is really fast. Um, it's called fast noise light. It's a really cool um, project and it boasts pretty good performance improvement in most cases. Um, so there's a C and C++ version and I'm testing it in both 2D and 3D. Uh, so for 2D noise, we're testing a 256 array, and 3D is going to be a 4096 uh, density map. Uh, we'll talk about that part later. So basically, the test fixture is pretty simple. All you got to do is just do a, uh, a for loop, and then this one is a for loop in three dimensions. It's pretty cool, and I'll talk about this method later. So pretty much you just run the benchmark and uh, if we go ahead here and run it, uh, it will come back with some actual data. So the Perlin C implementation, the naive Perlin C sort of implementation takes 3.7 milliseconds in 2D and the fast noise version takes uh, 0.2 milliseconds, which is a vast order uh, of improvement. But actually, when you look in context, the same algorithm for the Perlin C, 2D versus 3D, is taking a lot more time. And I really can't figure out why, because, oops, there we go. Uh, I really can't figure out why because it looks the same to me. I, I've read these two functions and aside from adding the, ne the next dimension, it doesn't really change anything to me. So it means that there's some sort of compiler optimization going on behind, in the, like in the back, that's messing with it somehow. And I'm not really sure how that's possible since I have gone through like O3 and it works on OFAST as well. Um, to do the same exact thing and it's really weird that that happens. So that's just a one weird oddity. It actually performs a lot better in the 3D tests. So if we look at the 3D tests, the Perlin C 3D takes uh, 11 and a half milliseconds. Uh, the C++ implementation, which uses a um, vector, takes a lot longer. I'm assuming there's probably some compiler optimizations that aren't really just being made based on the way the code is written or something. And then the fast noise light uh, version actually takes eight milliseconds, which is pretty much the fastest. Uh, also, it's pretty cool um, that you can actually do that in this little amount of time, even on the PSP. So the last case I want to talk about is actual chunk generation for something like Minecraft. Um, the by uh, so this test fixture basically generates five total height maps. Here's a bio map, and then two through five are, is a four octave Perlin noise used for uh, actual genuine height map. 
Uh, and then this method is supposed to be like cave generation, but it's not really. Uh, it's sort of a simulation. Uh, you could actually do this way simpler by just basically creating a randomized vector that's going through uh, and then making different points and then subtracting spheres from that and doing that on such an interval that um, basically makes sense. Basically what ends up happening is that this is way more complex, uh, but it will also simulate kind of the uh, performance effects of adding sort of add-ons or like other additional things like generating ores or something. Um, that's just kind of what this is here for. It's sort of just uh, adding extra complexity. This one here is setting the entire chunk data. Now you would have a for loop with a little bit more interesting conditions there. Uh, but basically it sets chunk data and this is actually the full chunk array So it's like 16 by 16 for the base of the chunk times 16 for the height then times 16 for a 16 stack section So you have 256 by 16 by 16 um, It's 64 kilobytes of data uh, And it all sets this in 3.3 milliseconds, which is incredibly fast for the purpose that it's actually doing this